shut The keys were lost, you screamed And so began the saga cry So I was gonna go, but I just got a few messages from people I've never met that actually asked me to read a story from the Bastion Square book because they want to know more about Lady Churchill. I'm going to read a quick story to give you more info about Lady Churchill. So this is Ghosts and Legends of Bastion Square by my role model and I really do admire him and he gives me a lot of feedback and helps my helps my adventures. So it's pretty cool. So if you haven't been on a ghostly walk yet, uh, make sure you go on one. But if you're here in Victoria, because there's a lot of people from Victoria who don't know about ghostly walks, which I am shocked because that's one of the main reasons why I keep coming back to Victoria monthly. It's discoverthepast.com and it's a family run base. John Adams, Chris Adams, they're all pretty, pretty cool people. It's pretty, pretty weird. But anyways, um, I am here till Tuesday. I do have a few appointments with some people to meet up with. I'm meeting the guy from Acquire about Matthew Bigby, how I got honored on Monday. I'm also getting my book on Monday about Matthew Bigby. Uh, tomorrow I go to Travel Inn and there's a couple of stories that I want to follow as well as hit the library and the archives. So hopefully the Royal BC Museum. I always say that I'm going to do that, but I always run out of time. I also got a question from a friend of mine because they're like, if you can't sleep about to Victoria, how could you afford it? Blah, 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 blah. And I, I, there's things I've got to pay for, like my cat who just went in surgery. The answer is I get donations. There's people who actually send me money to come to Victoria. So I usually get about uh, like a hundred bucks, maybe every few months, a hundred to three hundred dollars. People that I don't know, just because they like to hear these stories, so that's how I could afford it. I budget it out. I also work three to four days a week now, and I put that money aside as well as my savings, so I don't overdo it. The fundraiser that I'm doing right now for my cat, that strictly goes to my cat, so none of that is paying for this trip, because like I said, uh, my trips, I pre-book monthly and I prepay for it and budget money out for it so that is how I could work. I eat cheap, <laughs> I eat crap food, I don't go to Starbucks every day. When I come to Victoria that's when I splurge and buy things so it looks like I have a lot of money but I don't. But that's basically the way to go. It's all about savings and living cheap and working lots. So I pretty have much have no life because I work, and then I come to Victoria, I edit, and then I do it again the next week. So it's pretty crazy. Actually, when I go back home on Tuesday morning, I work the following Wednesday, which is closing, to Friday, and then I get two days off, and then I'm back to work. So it's a lot of stuff. I haven't really had time to go out with friends or do my vegan activism and stuff, so... This has pretty much been my life lately, but I've been loving it. Like I said, I'm obsessed over Mac Big B. And if you have any questions, I, uh, that's another reason why I'm doing live streaming, because people have been messaging me, and it's really cool feedback. I'm hoping more people will go to my Facebook page, facebook.com, for slash Mac 31 Like my page, donate if you can, and little bit counts. Like my videos, leave comments, etc. Because like I said, I do this for fun, I don't get paid, but it's an obsession, so it's pretty, pretty cool. I'm wondering if anybody's actually up watching, but just wanted to answer that question before I forgot. So once again, this is from Ghosts and Legends of Bastion Square, Ghost Who Walks, discoverthepast.com. You could get a copy from them. This is actually one of my favorite books, and it's actually signed by John and Chris. So it's one of my treasures. <laughs> so Lady Churchill, the permanent guest. The woman Brady lost his life over was like him, a regular person at the borough parlor. In fact, she actually lived in the hotel on the fourth floor in a small room overlooking the harbor. And once again, I am in room 49 on the fourth floor. 
So this is her room. It is possible that she died of a drug overdose there. That is supported by the collection of drug paramilia found hidden in the room during the 1980s renovations. The room was remodeled and enlarged and now boosts a designer bathroom, a polished sitting area, and a working fireplace, which is actually <laughs> not working. It's considered a fire hazard. It's just the setting to make a girl want to come back and stay a little longer. After the Rebirth Hotel reopened, a young couple were among the first to stay in room 49. Returning one evening after dinner, they approached the room, the woman in front of her husband trailing behind. She rounded a corner in the hallway near their room and heard the door close. Then she saw the apparition of a woman materialized in front of it. There was no doubt in her mind that she was face to face with the ghost, and she could clearly discern her features. She was in her mid-thirties, had once been attractive, and wearing a stylish but cheap dress. As the specter held out her arms to prevent the pair from entering the room, the woman froze in fear and waited for her husband to catch up. By the time he did, the apparition had faded away. Suddenly, as the woman tried to explain what she had seen, the couple heard a whirring sound and felt a cold wind rush past them, leaving them shivering. When it died down, they both smelled an unmistakable aroma of perfume. Since then, other guests and housekeeping staff in and around room 49 have seen or smelled the ghost they have dubbed Lady Churchill. It is merely a coincidence that Thomas Hopper's architectural office was located for several years on the fourth floor of the Hibben Bone Block, in the vacancy of what is room now, the vacancy of what is now room 49. So again, one reason why I love to travel to Victoria is because I like to tell local stories, and I think the best way to experience it is to be in the actual setting, which is why I booked room 49. Last time I was here, I didn't get a chance to, so I just stayed at the hotel. So it's pretty cool. Somebody is watching me. It's <laughs> up, Morgan. Hey. So I hope you enjoyed the story, and I'm glad that there's other people watching. Um, and yeah, it's pretty cool. Follow me, facebook.com for slash fun to me two thirty one. Help fund my trips, uh, check out my previous videos from Victoria, Vancouver, etc. And that's about it. Until the next story, I will sign off and hopefully you guys have a good night. Check out my photos, etc. Please, please, please leave feedback about the live stream because this is my first few days I've done it. and. I think it's really cool that I can actually see people watching me rather than just uh, talking to myself, to the camera. And hey Dustin, what are we going for coffee? So I hope you enjoyed story time and let me know what, again what you think. Have a good night. This is your host Mary Jam from Mary Jam's Ghostly Adventures showing you Haunted BC in Victoria BC. Locked by one of us, guess who? You're crying, I'm all alone. There's not a living soul who cares now, but I am just down the hall. Oh, there's honey dolls and you love that. I can't give up on you despite the harm you do. A friend is not this worthless. Must be.
is growing. We're all trophies.